Okay, so let's see if we can do this before it starts raining. This is going to be the quick five minute walkthrough of the solar install. So what you see are is these are the six panels we put on the roof of our Grand Design Momentum 350M. Each one of them placed eh, however we could manage. We tried to measure it out and make it a little bit symmetric, but you can't always do that. We wanted to leave room for a third air conditioner if we decided to put that in. We measured carefully, put the brackets in, attached the wires. Now we made our own connect our own cabling system, cable management, and put these planks on through so it wasn't rubbing against the roof material because that's a little bit fragile. On this one we actually made brackets to extend out over the edge of the roof a little bit. It doesn't extend past the awning as you can see. So it doesn't add any width to the trailer. But we wanted enough strength to withstand everything. So the cables are all routed. We put one up front here. This one runs horizontally across the roof because we had some room for it. It was a little tricky to install. And then right by this here roof vent, we made our entry holes. This is where we ran the cable down into the RV. In here, we ran the cabling behind this wall. Now up there in that little cutout is where the cabling entered. It's all going through some wall space and gap space between the walls. And behind these panels, if you take these panels off, there are actually some cutouts, some access cutouts. So we fish the line down and use those cutouts to feed the line and direct it to where we wanted. And on this side we were able to gain access to the pass-through. Now, as an aside, in the pantry this is where we installed all the monitoring equipment and remotes. So we have the Magnum remote, the AGS, and a trimetric display from Bogart Engineering. And we fed cabling through to the side into the space behind here. And we're able to run networking cable across the top there and into that loft area where I'm going to be setting up all the network equipment. And I've got to ground it today so that it all doesn't move. The pass through. Now today is kind of a cleanup day, but this is where a lot of the magic happened. If you see clear back there, that's where we fed the cabling through and ran it all across the top of the pass-through. We also redesigned this whole space because there's a lot of wasted space in here. So we redesigned it to recapture some of the space that this battery rack was going to take up. This battery rack we had made, and it is solid. We'll be doing a little bit more to shore it up and covering those terminals because, well, you do not want to short those out. Really bad things happen when you do that. And now we go to the other side, and you can see the main breaker box. Now, obviously, not covered up yet. It will be. But this is where everything, all the main wires go in from the battery. We have four 100 amp hour LifePo batteries. They are Reliance. Ended up just buying Reliance. No specific reason. Wasn't any more convenient. Just happened to be what I could get easily and quickly when I ordered everything else. And then cut access holes 
through this wall into the generator compartment, which is where we will go next. You see two accesses, one up here, one down here. And the generator compartment. This is a tricky space to work in. Let me tell you. We kept one of the original batteries. This is solely dedicated to starting the generator. That way it was just simpler and a lot more reliable just in case you know we have problems with the main batteries or they run down or something like that we wanted a separate source to be able to start the generator from and created another custom rack mounted sideways in here it will be tied in right now it rocks across the top it'll be tied into these top braces and the inverter, not covered right now obviously, is on another backboard we built and very securely fastened and backed by the other board we built in the pass-through so it does not move and all the connectors are right there thus minimizing the length of wire run which is very important and also giving us something that will help regulate the temperature a little bit easier. We can cut some vents into this compartment so that these guys can vent a little bit easier and this guy can vent easier. And when we monitor the temperature, we can monitor the temperature of the whole compartment as well as the individual pieces. And there we go. That is a quick rundown of the system as we installed it. It's all running perfectly right now. We're still in the testing phase. We'll do the shakedown trip this week, this coming week, and it's working. That's it.